Hello, LiveGDX community. I'm James T. Kahn, and I'm excited to introduce a new video series on the LiveGDX channel, Journeys in Game Dev. In this series, we'll be interviewing exceptional game developers who have brought their visions to life using LiveGDX. In today's episode, we have Lucas, who will share insights and experiences from their journey with developing Kakali. Let's dive right in. What inspired you to pursue game development? My early exposure to gaming sparked my interest with the area, and it, it drove me to choose a career in computer science. Uh, while employed in the tech industry, I cultivated game development as a personal hobby, and eventually I made the decision to leave my tech job and transition into game development, focusing on creating uh, this MMORPG. Kakele Online. Why did you choose LibGDX for your project? While considering my options, I sought a Java framework that could offer extensive flexibility and uh, to enable me to port my game to both PC and mobile. Uh, upon trying uh, some options, I came across LibGDX. I tested some of the games on the website and I noticed that the performance was really uh, good in low-end smartphones. And then I delved into the documentation, which turned out to be very user-friendly and allowed me to quickly set a prototype. Um, and then further investigation into the community on GitHub and Discord revealed an active and engaged uh, user base of this library. And these factors uh, convinced me that that was the library of choice for us, which was a, you know, a, a mature, top-notch and enduring library that I needed for my game development. Um, and I considered other choices such as Unity for, for the project. Uh, while Unity is a very powerful and widely used game engine, I was looking for a Java-based framework because I had a lot of experience with Java that would offer uh, a great flexibility and ability to port my game to PC and mobile and also being able to fine-tune the code uh, so that it works really well on lower-end devices. Um, and that was a critical factor for for our project's success. And this active support uh, of and the the active and supportive community also played a role. Uh, it offered valuable resources and assistance. And overall, while Unity is a popular choice, uh, LibGDX aligned better with uh, my project's needed needs and goals at the time. And that's why I chose LibGDX. Tell us a little bit about Kakali. I'm uh, a co-founder in the game and one of the developers behind Kakali Online, a 2D MMORPG that has uh, we launched on platforms that include Steam, Epic Games, Google Play and Apple Store. You can also download the game directly from our website and, and run it on your PC. Uh, drawing inspiration. Uh, we draw inspiration for games uh, me and my brother uh, cherished during our childhood, such as Zelda, Final Fantasy, Tibia, RuneScape. Uh, and with, with those choices, we uh, put together all the greatest features that um, these games have with our own twist and created Kakele Online, uh, a cross-platform uh, 2D MMO. It's available for free featuring uh, some uh, an opti optional subscription um, and also you can uh, purchase server boosts and acquire some cosmetics in the game. In the recent update, we introduced new elements um, to the game, including uh, a dwarven lore and map, automatic chat translations, emojis, a card album, infinite dungeons and, and more. Check out uh, our website and social media. Uh, we have like uh, the list of for all the changes we've made in the recent update. So I'm sure a lot of people are interested in this question. How long did it take you to develop the game from concept to launch? 
From the initial concept to the launch, uh, the game was first version was developed in about six months, but the first uh, iteration was very rudimentary and we continuously improved it over time, learning from other mistakes and uh, learning with, you know, the, the game industry and trends and uh, learning from other game developers as well. Um, and our evolution was uh, influenced by our players' feedback, which we uh, actively listen to, being a game that is community-driven. Uh, and however, our, our journey didn't end there. For the past three, three, three years, uh, we have been consistently enhancing the game through regular updates. And to observe this transformation, you can explore our YouTube channel. And if you sort by oldest, you can see the first versions of the game were quite simple and how we evolved over time. Can you share a fun fact from the development of your game? A fun fact about the game, uh, we introduced pets to the game in one of our updates, serving as companions that would aid you in battling monsters and casting spells. And these pets are trainable and customizable, allowing you uh, to give them unique names and the debut pet was a capybara and uh, it was um, initially as an internal joke to one of our influencers that had a photo of, with a capybara and unexpectedly the you know people love capybaras and our players and newcomers they love this concept of having the capybara as the game's mascot and as a result uh, Kakele has evolved into being the MMORPGs of the capybaras. We have a lot of capybaras in the game now because of it. There are a lot of challenges when making a game. What was the most significant challenge that you faced during this project? Uh, it's not easy to create a game. Uh, creating an online game adds even more complexity to the table. And even after lunch, uh, you need to nurture it, update and rebalance the game. Sometimes players won't understand that and they become very passionate and criticize a lot on the decisions we've made. So uh, learning how to parse feedback, player feedback is one of the biggest challenges you may have because you know it, it can um, uh, affect your motivation to keep going and uh, developing the game. Um, and one other thing is uh, how it's quite hard to create a game with a gameplay that works well across different platforms, because on PC you have mouse and keyboard, on mobile it's totally different because you play mostly with your fingers. Um, and sometimes players ask us to add features that makes a lot of sense on PC, but it doesn't work on mobile and gives unfair advantages for players on PC. So balancing that is is uh, a challenge. And one uh, significant challenge as well is to coordinate game updates across different game stores, given that each of them has different processes and can take minutes or even days in some cases. Were there any LibGDX features, tools, or third-party libraries that you found particularly helpful? There were many helpful libs that we uh, use in our game. Um, we use the texture packer to pack our sprites. We use packer to generate the desktop lib releases. We use uh, MobiVM, RoboVM to build uh, our game for iOS. We use GDX Pay to handle in-app purchases. Uh, we use Robopods and Outpods for Google and Facebook SDKs. Uh, we use GDX VFX for shader effects. We use Dextra Typist library for label effects and emojis. Um, there is hack lights for like light effects. Uh, and these are all really helpful uh, to for us to build the game. And without it, uh, you know, the game wouldn't be what it is today. And you can find all of these libraries in the libgdx repository on GitHub, and that's and that's pretty cool to have and very useful. Is there a specific feature you would like to see in libgdx that would have helped you with development? I would love to see uh, game consoles uh, backend supported, you know, Xbox, PlayStation, um, 
from our experience in game events, uh, people and talking to other game developers, people start game development uh, usually targeting PC or consoles. Um, and I believe these, if we had these console backends for libgdx, it would increase the popularity uh, of libgdx. And speaking of events, and this is not a feature itself, but I would love to see uh, some sort of presence from the libgdx community in these events so you know people can exchange experiences or maybe even have a stand uh, presenting the libgdx at these events so i really like this next question because it's really helpful for those who are just starting out in game development if you could give your past self one piece of advice when starting out what would it be when starting out, I think we were uh, a bit rushed to launch the game. Um, so launching and iterating is a good strategy, but we do think we launched the game too soon, uh, especially for our kind of game, because after launch, you have to consider, you know, their opinions for changes and new versions of the game. So you want to have your first version in a state you're happy with. Otherwise, it's much harder to change it after that um, and also be careful with texture switches and use object pools so what's next for you do you have plans for a new game or updates to the current one we are full steam ahead uh, actively updating and working in our mmorpg kakele online um, since it's an online game um, rpg we need to keep launching new features and content to keep players engaged. Otherwise, they leave, uh, and, and that's natural. Uh, if they don't have new things to do in the game, they will eventually get bored of it. Um, and we were able to monetize the game and create a real business behind it, and to the point that we are now a company of nine people. Uh, we are aiming to grow the game even more and hopefully hire more people to help us get the game even further than it is right now. And yes, in the future, maybe in a five-year time span, even considering creating new games. Well, that wraps up our interview. A big thank you to Lucas for taking the time to share behind the scenes insights that can benefit new game developers just starting out on their journey. If you're interested, you can try out Kakali on Google Play, the Apple Store, Steam, and Epic Games. Having seen all that footage and hearing Lucas's insights, I'm personally eager to dive in and try the game out myself. Now, if you've enjoyed this content, please consider subscribing to our channel if you haven't already. We'd also love to hear from you, so drop a comment below and let us know if you'd like to see more content like this. If you've published a LibGDX game, and you would like to do an interview, you can reach out to me on Discord, James T. Khan, or drop a comment in the video. Thanks for watching.